So here comes yeah. Sky Scheffler. Um, Hold on, just give us a second here. This guy's walking by. This guy's. I'm gonna have down. to give. I'm gonna have to give him a congrats. Really? Right? Scotty's okay. tall, man. He congrats, tall. Scotty. Nothing. It's over two. Four play presented by Barstool Sports. Second show of the week. It's major championship time. We're at the PGA Championship at Valhalla in Louisville. 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 Home of the Kentucky bourbon. We've had quite a bit of bourbon, man. Yep. It's been a bourbon heavy trip. They say that when you come here, this is bourbon country. We went to the Buffalo Trace Distillery yesterday. Um, Fireball Sazerac. Yeah. The whole deal. Um, one of the coolest experiences I think I've ever had. Fantastic. Our tour guide, Josh, I believe was his name. That guy was great. Hi. What up? How are you? I know. I Every time I get out of there, I'm like, I got to touch this thing up a little bit. Good so, luck. Just so people know, we're on the range at the PJ Championship. Yeah, so this is an audio experience for you. You're listening to this in your car, at you work, doing? wherever you may be, enjoying your podcast. This is definitely my one locker, that mate. you should go to the Foreplay yeah. YouTube uh, podcast channel. Uh, or um, on Rumble, of course. And we will um, be seeing a lot of PGA Tour pros and live pros. You know, live guy just walked by. Live David guy just Puig. walked by. Mm -hmm. um, and if you look on the video, there is a bridge behind us here at Valhalla. And just, you know, keep your eye out for whoever you may see back there. It should be crystal clear, right? right. Is, is it in frame, Brennan? Oh, right. yeah. So just in case you hear what you just heard, where we say hello to someone and you're like, who are they talking to? It could be anybody because we're at the PGA Championship. It's good context. Need context. We've, we're also positioned like our back is to it. Well, yeah, we're, I'll keep an eye out this way. We're trying not to get technically the competition shots in the frame because I think that's illegal. Correct. So we're trying to just be near the range. You can hear the range. You can hear like the energy of the driving range yeah. of the major championship, but not get anything, you know, DMCA strikes, whatever, for being there. So we are here. We're in the mix, as they say. Um, we had a huge moment, Tommy Fleetwood. We have a tradition going mm -hmm. where, you know, he's a um, great friend of ours, one of yeah. our favorite people on tour. Taylor made guy. Phenomenal golf player, a flusher. Flusher. A flusher. And he um, likes our, takes a liking to our merchandise. And we Players Championship hooked him up. Yep. Multiple majors we've hooked him up. I gave him some stuff at the Tour Championship last year. That's right. We gave him at something like, at Oak Hill last Hill. year. Mm -hmm. So right. it's, it's, it is a tradition with we, Tommy Fleetwood. We handed him the uh, crew neck that Trent is wearing right now, the PGA, with the Louisville, Kentucky, and a glass of bourbon on the back. Mm. He said that he really liked it. Uh, the video is hilarious. Go watch it on our social. He makes the funniest face of all time when he realizes mm. that we have something for him. And he said he'll be wearing it into the tournament today as you're listening to it on thursday so we'll see if he holds that promise there's michael block you gotta be kidding me blocky what does he say dan come on come on no <laughs> no and he does the twirl <laughs> dude we were talking <laughs> about that the no, that's one that's blocky what, spin you know who no. does a great one is kirk yeah kirk does are you serious <laughs> <laughs> he's like he's two feet away from us i know I'm just, it. no i'm saying yeah. it's funny yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, signing autographs. He's a man of the people, for sure. He's got his face all over this place. They've got a bunch yeah, of banners a of him. He, they really do. He's yeah. the face of the of the PGA professionals. Uh, he's their guy. He's their, their guy. guy. I, look, I as much as anybody enjoy the the blocky stuff has gotten humorous. Of course, what he did last year was insane, phenomenal. When it, the the hole in one, we left we left the planet, as you would say. He, that is that, true. That was when when that hole in one went in. It's just, the hype <laughs> leading into that was already out of control. It was like this guy came out of nowhere. He's playing with the best of them, and then he just holes out. He makes all one. And then he had to get up and down to make he a had cut? A, is that what it no, was? No, he had an, a ridiculous right. up and down on 18 to finish T15, which guaranteed him getting back. A ridiculous up and down. And you can see the clip is awesome because Rory's caddy is watching it. All right. And as, as soon as the ball pitches, he just goes. Sorry. All right, real quick, real yeah, quick. Ted so Scott here's what we got going on. Here's what we got going on at Valhalla. Ted Scott just walked by with his golf bag, which means Scotty Scheffler just got off the chipping green or he's walking off the putting green as we speak. He will be making his way over to the driving range. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you this get to watch moment. Frankie's heart break in this real time. You have to get eye contact. You'll, he'll have never to. get it. Is he going to wave? He's not coming on the pod. Dude, He's not we're coming holding, on the pod. We're holding microphone. He won't talk you to You should go walk into his, into his path. No. See, this is, this uh, is, is going to be tough because he's going to just full ignore. What a, uh, what a like cock of the walk type feel that Ted Scott must have walking on. Ted Scott will be leaving... Yeah. The PGA Championship on Saturday to mm -hmm. attend his daughter's graduation. Daughter's graduation. That's He's right. going to have uh, Scotty. It's actually one of the closest to the pin questions, not to not oh. to spoil it. That's okay. coming later. Oh, but have... uh, the chat, the tour chaplain. Obviously, Scotty is you know big, very religious guy. Yeah, spends a lot of time with the tour chaplain, and and he'll be on the bag on Saturday, and then 
Ed will be back for Sunday. Kind of presumptuous to think that he's going to make chaplain. the chaplain. Yeah. That will be caddying for Scotty Scheffler? That is correct. Wow. That's yeah. that's news to me that they have a PGA Tour I chaplain. I might have to be What's back in on Scotty. It's, it's a, like a man of God. Yeah, it's like a, I don't a, man know, of a minister. Is, I, I'm not sure. But yeah. it's it's something to do with the church. and um, they, right. Yeah, there's like Bible study groups on tour. Oh, wow. I it's, did not know it's that. A, it's a real thing. I was, I was thinking when I saw that headline that like if Scotty shoots a 62 on Saturday, Ted Scott's like, oh, man, maybe, you know, it's pretty much all Scotty. Who do you think the leader of that God squad is out there on PJ Tour? I think it was Webb for a long time. Oh, uh, yeah. Webb mm-hmm. Simpson. Him and Scotty went on his podcast after he won the Masters. Is that and right? They have like a Bible-focused golf podcast. I saw that. Yeah. I didn't see that. Yeah, That's Webb right. and uh, I think, I mean, Scotty, Scotty has to be the alpha of that group now. I would think he's kind of the alpha of all. Of yes, all. I mean, he is. And that's see, kind of what I meant. Like, I see Dewey kind of like making his way across here too. <laughs> this is a he's great lumbering spot. his way across. Yeah, he's bridge, lumbering. You know? his way that across. is cool about golf. The one thing you don't get is in other sports where when like the entourage starts to show up first and people start buzzing. Mm-hmm. Like when people used True. to see Joey on the range, you'd see Robbie Mac. Yeah. Now you see Ted Scott, and it's like things are happening. I yeah, bet it's you like it's the, the same uh, at NASCAR where the car makes its way out to like the pit yeah. area and you're like oh shit like the racers are about to come out What's it like the hurricane out. surge kind of or the surge comes in first and then a hurricane's coming yeah that's, that's right like, kind of what it feels like yeah you know it's kind guy. of what it feels like Sepp Straka. Sepp Straka, i took him this week um on the on he's, the gambling show he's playing nice with for Kirk an hour and winner i took him top 30 is like plus one on the drafting sports book dude i want to take him to win it he's been yeah. playing well he's he's, does this feel like a major to you guys right now standing here yeah it does yes I'm guessing it doesn't to you. No, it just feels a little too relaxed. Well, uh, first of all, we set up here where we're probably not supposed to be, and that feels like it's, it's Brian like... Harmon. Do you have anything you want to say to him, Frankie? <laughs> oh, wait, where? <laughs> right there. Oh, I didn't see him. I had oh. a race. Sorry. I walked into that you one. You didn't see him. <laughs> Frankie was waiting for that one. Uh, I, actually, I was, one, I was you know wondering what? I don't have looking. anything against Dude, him. Dude, I was wonder... lefty. You got to stick together. I always wonder how this is from a listening perspective when we're doing this. I know. It's tough. It's I don't know. know. It's, a, it's a visual podcast yeah. for sure. Because I mean. Dwayne Bach makes his way, yeah. making his way downtown. Look at a big smile. Yeah. No, I get it. It's a little bit tough of a viewing, but I mean, you know, we're here at the major. We got to kind of interact. Right? Yeah, it's I'm right, with man. it. This episode is brought to you by our great friends at Chevrolet. We are talking Motor Trends top SUV. Yes, of yeah. the year. Beat everything. In 2024. And we're not talking that they just did this tight little group of special. No, no, no. The Blazer EV from Chevrolet was Motor Trend's SUV of the year. They judged big, small, gas, hybrid, electric vehicles, luxury SUVs. Blazer EV beat them all. This thing is awesome, gentlemen. Fantastic. An incredible vehicle. Get the Blazer EV. Load up the golf clubs. Go get your friend. Pick them up. Put their golf clubs in there. And just have a great, great it's a summer. Great golf vehicle. That's true. Hundred percent. A bunch of shoes back there. They got plenty of space. Nice SUV. It's all electric. They look sharp. And the Blazers iconic. I mean, you can go back decades and get all kinds of see all kinds of cool Blazers. They've brought that bad boy into the future. So Blazer EV is phenomenal. The all new, all electric Blazer EVs. Bold design, dynamic performance make it the perfect electric vehicle to get you to the course in style and comfort. Um, it's got an available EPA estimated 324 miles of range on a full charge. Head over to Chevy.com slash Blazer EV to check out lease offers and amazing deals. Chevrolet, together let's drive. So, I mean, we got to kind of touch on the the news that's been going around. Okay. Which, I mean, I, the second favorite in the field who I've taken as my official pick to win, um, probably the most famous guy of this generational world of golf, family man, well-liked. It was announced that he filed for a divorce this week, major championship week, Roy McIlroy. Yeah. Uh, stunning news, I would say, is a guy who just, it just came off like he's he's got a couple of young kids. He's Mr. Family Man, the whole deal. Nobody's really gotten any other information. I think Rory's the kind of guy that everybody likes him so much that nobody's really prying. Um, but huge news. Yeah, I, I, I asked a question in the press conference that I, you know, I didn't want to get too into specifics, but I felt like, you know, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't allude to all of the things that have happened in his life in the last couple of years. So I said something along the lines of, you know, it's. It, I said something along the lines of, you know, it's it's been quite a couple of years for you. How are you? How are your energy levels and how are you doing? And uh, which I thought was pretty open ended. And he said, I'm ready to play this week. So, you know, it's, it's not he doesn't have to answer the question. He's not going to say anything else. 
but I just felt like everyone in that room was wondering how he was doing, how he feels. It's definitely the elephant in the room, I would imagine. Yeah. Everybody's sitting there wondering if anybody's going to say anything. Um, Rory's just one of those guys, and there's not that many of them. Tiger's definitely one of them, where he's just always in it, always in the storylines. With the, with the live stuff, he's obviously been the head of that on the PJ Tour, and then you kind of feel like you know things are dying down a little bit, although the, the policy board stuff kind of ramped things back up, and then you got this. It's just... Yeah, he's a very, very famous golfer, and one, when, when something like this happens, one thing leads to the other, though. Like, you're I agree. so famous, and more famous things just keep happening. I agree. Like, that's and that's what I was important. kind of trying to get at. Was like, you've been in the headlines for three years straight, literally straight, and like you, you have this news come out on Monday, the day before, you play your ass off. You know, you just look won. as good Twice. as you could possibly look. You won the week before. It, it's like Dusted it's Xander just Shop, crazy how up and down it's been. He does have an amazing ability to play through. Like even when when the live stuff was at its top, like at the tour championship, he's like, I'm just gonna win. Yeah, he did. He just wins through all this stuff. And remember two years ago when he won the Canadian Open, going yeah. up against JT, and he had that little quip about Greg Norman that he passed, you know, how many wins he had. But that was like when he was in the middle of it. Yeah. And then he wins the Canadian Open that year he, when he won the FedEx Cup. He so seems to be a hero at compartmentalizing. That is why I took him this week. And if people go back, your golf historians a little bit, in 2014 when he won here, it was a crazy stretch. That same year, I believe, it came out the same week of like the BMW at Wentworth maybe. Or I'm not sure when it came the out. Con, but it came out like that week that he had – legitimately canceled called off whatever you want to call it his wedding with caroline wozniacki and he had ca called it off after they had already sent out the wedding invitations yeah. and everyone's like what the fuck there's all kinds of drama around that he went out one and then that same summer won like three tournaments in a row including two major championships so whatever it is about rory i like that this week a, <laughs> a fun forgotten fact about that man is that he during the als ice bucket challenge poured a bucket of ice water onto megan markle i remember that, that i blocked right. it yeah, it'll, it'll be interesting to see how he handles it all. It's like you know, when something like that personal that comes out, you either you either take it in stride and you like just you kind of hone in on what you have to do, just accomplish your job and go, or you feel seen and like your game's off. And I I could see it going either way. I I mean I know you have the the wager in there, but it's got a it's, definitely, it's, wager. it's, it's a but it's a tough one to. It is, but here's my thing: it's like it's not like, in my opinion. Sunday everything was fine, and then Monday he decided to get divorced. Right. So in my it's opinion, been, he's been surely it's been happening for a while. I guess like the real scene part, it's like yeah. everyone's looking Publicly, at him. Yeah. It's like holy shit, like. And he's had an issue at majors in general, right? And so now if you're gonna throw hopefully in the he fact takes that, stride, you know, hopefully it'd be, this guy, uh, it'd be incredible if he won. Just a fuck it'd be you to nuts. everyone. Like, don't give a fuck about my personal life. Let's just fucking win majors. But that's the thing I was saying before. So this yeah, one's that's a, what he has to do. This one's a little different, but this like that's what I was saying. When everything's going down in Rory's life, he wins. Right. Which he is, wins. That's why I like the young man this week. I really it's do. Interesting um, news week for sure in the world of golf. Very interesting news week. Uh, and then we've got, you know, I know we kind of talked about it on the last show a little bit, but back to we've got Scotty who's back. He has now put out the announcement. We did a lot of uh, speculating, but oh, yeah, know, we did. it had the child. Everything seems to have been going well. Now he's here. Um, and then Brooks Kepka also won his most recent start on Live a couple weeks ago. So you've got those three have pretty much all won all the last tournaments. Chris Goddard up played. as well. Got up here yep. to watch he's early. won his last kind start. Of a, kind of a tank. Yeah, he's a big he's time a tank. tank. He's and the a, mustache, he looks like a plumber. I love it. <laughs> he is a big time uh, tank. I love it. New I Jersey love that. Jersey no, I mean, plumber. There's, there's, it's a big boy golf course. It's wet. It's going to play long. It's going to play hard. It's going to be, you know, you're going to have to drive it well. It looks like it's playing right into the hands of Rory and Bryson and, and Scotty and Brooks. You know, the big boys. Like, I, I think Scotty said this yesterday. He was like, at these tournaments, it almost takes the short hitters kind of out of it because – if they miss a fairway, they're dead. And it's and, and with you know the greens being firm, you want to be further up there. So I think it's going to be one of these blue chip winners. I, I don't think it's going to be someone who is surprising. When we're on a pro range like this, the the biggest thing that sticks out to me is how high these guys hit the golf ball. Like I'm watching some guys hit seven irons, and these are moon shots. The fairway yep. woods up in the air. You know, people ask me like, "What's the biggest difference between you know?" Scotty Scheffler's going across the bridge right now. This is the red alert. All right, so let's just, just keep standing. talking. We're just standing. Keep here. talking about yeah, the, so the, I just, the fairway woods. It's, it's, it's the fairway woods right that like launch super high. I like so. that we were talking, and Frankie still said, "Let's just keep talking." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's, just keep talking. <laughs> let's keep doing this audio medium that <laughs> we're doing. Let's flying down the stairs. Looking over there. Let's just do that. Keep believing. There you go. Oh yeah, he's. Let's all just. Congrats, Scotty. Everybody be. Nothing. Wow. Fucking I, nothing, uh, man. I've seen Scotty in person since he's become Beard Scotty. God, I got oh, maybe nothing. Oh, my first. Oh, no, I saw him at RBC. 
think that's the first time. What do you think he's eating right there? He's got he's got he's eating something right now. <sighs> peanut butter banana thing. sandwich with my guy. That's what that is. <laughs> that's it's like the most a... popular sandwich on tour. They all Why? I don't know. They all love peanut butter and banana have sandwiches. Have those ingredients Nothing. everywhere? I guess so. It's pretty easy to make. Probably yeah. you know it probably uh, travels well. Yeah. So, we're all pretty hungover from all the bourbon situation around here. Do you think Scotty Scheffler's ever like been hungover? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Dude. Yes. For think sure. So? Went to the University yeah. of Texas. Yeah. I, think I don't know, dude. I just feel like he's like you know he's he's a he's a God fearing man. He's talking he's kind of keeps it together all the time. Is there anything in the Bible that says don't drink? I just feel there's like a lot of wine. I think in he the actively yeah. Yeah. think that it's probably. he actively nah, puts his eyes around. I think he's more Frankie, normal. Are you even play by play? What's going he on? He just actively looks around me. I think. You're yeah. you're He's yeah. wearing the same polo he wore when he announced his baby. Did you guys notice he was in a Nike polo? Company mm-hmm. man. That was insane. Like I think he, I think he saw that baby for the first time on the driving range. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he was in a golf polo. Oh, interesting. Wow. A lot of people talk about skin to skin contact. He was in skin to Nike polo contact. <laughs> yeah. Which skin is to sponsor contact? Yeah. Bennett's my nephew's name. Great name. Strong Bennett's a good name. name. Yeah. Strong. Bennett's a good name. Bennett Scheffler. Yeah. Bennett Scheffler. Wow. Call him Ben Benny. Yeah. It's a good Benny one. Chef. I love that. Tony Fina is walking by. We He's have got Rico Bosco. Rico number. Bosco. I don't know if people heard this. I was on this is a dog. Great story. I was on Dog Walk. That's this. Yeah, was that was that what I was on? Um, dog Walk with Eddie in Chicago, and we had Rico <laughs> Bosco on. And Rico, you know. He, he kind of mentions, like, as he's telling a story, yeah, I actually dropped your name recently. You helped me out with something. And then he kept talking. And then he tells this story where he said that he went out in Arizona when, when all the guys were out there for college basketball and they had a live show. And Rico Basco took it upon himself to go get live get, to go get guests. He's the guest guy. He said he's the guest guy. He's the guest guy. <laughs> so he said he's walking into, a, like, a golf galaxy, right? And I don't know what he was doing there. He was going to get something. Walking into the mall. And out comes Tony Finau. And Rico Bosco goes, oh, Tony, yeah, Tony, yeah, what's up? Like, uh, you know, Rico Bosco, four-play golf, Barstool Sports, what's up? And so, like, Tony Finau, like, stops and he, like, talks to this guy. <laughs> yeah. And they go on and on. And, you know, Rico's an incredible talker at that point. Oh, like, yeah. He's a Staten Island guy. He's going to talk you up for as oh, long yeah. as he wants to. <laughs> Somehow, some way, he gets Tony Finau's number, right? So it's for in him. His, it's in his phone book. And so now, and Tony's on an off week at this point. Um, so he's in Arizona just, like, chilling. And Rico's texting him, right? So now Rico's telling me this story, and I'm now placing one on one to get piecing one on one together. Frankie's face is getting more he red as he does the story. And now <laughs> Tony thinks it's four play. So I said, let me get t- let me get a look at these text messages, yeah, yeah. like you know, and it's just a sea of blue. No, <laughs> just like like Tony, it's oh, Rico, dude. Barstool Sports. The show starts at seven. T- send, hey Tony, you gonna come at seven? Send, uh, like. So all these things, right? The worst one was I can't even look at the you. The right worst now. one. So, so Tony responds once uh-huh. and says, I "Can't hey, do it, I man. I can't do it, man. That was right? it. I just can't do yeah, it. Yeah, I can't do it, man. Which is like the nicest polite way of saying shut, shut the, the fuck up. up. Yep. So mm-hmm. then the next day, what does mm-hmm. he say? Exactly he, goes, what that so is. he sent something. He's like, "Hey, man, no problem. Next time." And then there's a two hour gap, and he says, "Hit him straight." God, so, he can't, can't be out there, you know, soiling our brand. That's I know. It's I mean, uh, Tony thinks that we're just a rogue Staten Island guys, but he's not far off. No, he's not. <laughs> no, he's I, far off. And I, I, I mean, it'd be a funny thing if we ever see and talk to Tony Fina. I'd be like, yeah, "Hey, you ran into our guy Rico. Like, I, God love Rico. I love him." And they follow up, hit him straight text. Is I like that. A two lot. hours later, I like that a lot. Two hours later. Yep. Yep. Because I guess he was can't playing, do it, man. That's the stuff of nightmares. Can't do it, man. Period. Nothing. There's else. a period. I'm pretty sure. I wonder what that like. How did that? that second two hour later follow-up text registers with tony fina or to rico even like i said maybe next time i gotta tell him to hit him straight because i don't I think he was playing tbc scottsdale that day or something <laughs> gotta hit it straight he's just like man. in case you don't know hit him straight yeah, yeah. that's big good incredible good that frankie's is, doing a little hello. cleanup all right somebody okay. just said frankie's his hero which is cool we'll have to see <sighs> expectations might be a little um, um a hero high. wow is that what just got called yeah, yeah, someone just called me a hero you're a hero, a hero baby cool fighters oh you think well, of that song first yeah there goes my hero. i was gonna say something about uh how you played at piners but i, I want to wait oh Speaking yeah we are gonna wait uh, That's so what I, yeah. mm-hmm. we were uh you guys went to the dual city classic is mm-hmm. that what we call dual it derby city, derby city duel <laughs> Magenta Woo! Lounge. Magenta what time? I wasn't here. What time did you go to bed last night? I wasn't here. What time did you go to bed? You think? Derby City Duel, sponsored yeah. by Fireball Cinema. Fireball University. Imperial. Imperial. A lot of them. Um, so you guys are out here, and I went with Brendan Jones to Pinehurst, number two, Riggs is home, mm-hmm. and we played in the uh, U.S. Open. Um, Media Creators Day. Day. It wasn't oh, Media okay. Day. It was called Creators Day. Wow. Yeah, These are a lot people of creators that create out there. Yep. Content. A lot of people that from not just the golf space. Not just the golf space. Mainly the golf space. I think Media Day would have more like athletes and all that shit. 
This okay. was strictly just, you know, there's like 35 of us out there. It was pretty cool. We flew um, and we're going to put a video out. We still haven't decided where I'm probably leaning towards YouTube and uh, Rumble. But um, yeah, I played I played Punisher number two ball and hole played from 6,500 yards. And we put out a um, question on social. Do you think that I broke 80? And I think 70 something percent said no so far. So okay. we're going to have to see how that turns out. Yeah, we're, we're going to so be on the lookout for that yeah, video. We're gonna have to, yeah, we're going to have to all check that out. We are going to have to see. Um, we might have to team up for something. Maybe. Keep playing. I don't know how I played. I don't know how yeah. you played either. Right. I have no you idea. Know? Yeah, I have no right. idea. But, but I've, yeah, I like all 77% of, of people thought Frank yeah. didn't do it. Frank says, I like golf right now. I shot, eight, <laughs> I shot 88 in the queue. So, you know, we both we both didn't play right. well. Yeah. You did. Right, right. Yeah. Everyone said, that's yeah, right. that's right. The rumors. The rumor mills were getting you. The rumor mills were. Frank shot somewhere. Something, yeah, somewhere around there. Something similar. Something similar yeah. That. Something similar to that. That's what so. it feels like. Um, the grandstands and all that are going up there fast. And they are. It's, yep. It was yeah. great. I mean, the chorus looked phenomenal. Um, really hard. Like the greens were insane. Um, you played with my guy, uh, Wells Adams. Plays, played with Wells Adams, who's now one of my favorite people I've ever met in my entire Bachelor life. Bachelor guy. Bachelor in Paradise bartender. Had the best time with him. He's I cannot awesome. wait. His, his wife is going to be on Broadway. I think in Little Shop of Horror, she's going to be there for like six months. So he's going to be in New York for like the rest of this year. Yeah. So we're going to hang out a bunch. We're going to play a bunch of golf. By the way, and that's then, Sarah Hyland from Modern Family. Yeah, yeah, right. She right. is just oh. like. Just mega yep. star. Yeah. Her dad actually is also on Broadway. He's Dumbledore in the Harry Potter Broadway show. No so way. So that's just a very, very. No way. Uh, yeah. I talented family. family. Thespians. And then I play with Coach Rusty, who's like the nicest guy ever. Lefty. So if we ever do one of those lefty videos where he's going to have to be a, a part of it. And yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's my spiel from Pioneer. When you guys so say great. hero, I think of I Can Be Your Hero Baby by Same. Enrique Iglesias. That's what you had to say. I can Such be a good your song. hero baby. baby. Me too. Such a good song. Oh, Me too. The music video, he's throwing money around. Oh, yeah. Just throwing yeah, money around. Dude, you can belt that stand one. Stand by mm -hmm. you forever, mm -hmm. forever. Alex Bush with, is like, this is a disgusting audio oh, experience. Oh, oh. Poor Bush. See, so we've oh, trapped these they people they on this side of the range. Yep, we have. They and if they got to come this way, they can't. They're in a predicament. You got it. You got it. Yeah. No, we we're kinda, not. We had you trapped. We knew this was coming. No, we kind of knew this was coming. We said those yep. people were in a, they're, they're trapped yeah. in the corner over there. That was on, that's on us. And we let them out now, which is nice, which is nice. May 21st, someone I've never seen in person coming to Phoenix, the Footprint Center. $93, you can get tickets. Justin Timberlake. Wow. Oh, what a name yeah. that is. Legend, what a star. Dude. Yeah. Absolute J legend. T, I got to get to that one. Justin Timberlake. We got all kinds of Diamondbacks tickets. I'm seeing for 10 bucks on the 15th, 17th at 17 bucks. All kinds of good stuff going on. So go check out Game Time if you have not before. They are the official ticketing partner of Barstool Sports. Finding tickets for less has never been easier. You shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets to all of the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. Life's about going to events, right? Life is all about going to yeah. events. I went to a comedy show right before I came here. There were a bunch of comics in L.A. for that Netflix. Uh, oh, the Mulaney thing? Yeah, well, there was a. They had the Netflix is a joke festival. They were all in town for like the Brady roast. They were all kind of there you. for that. We went and saw John Stewart with a bunch of other guys. It was Ooh, awesome. It's nice. There is never an event you go to and you think, you know what? Should have just stayed on my couch. No, you got to go something do it. Something about the lights going down and you're like watching something. You know, it's feels special. Been doing it since the Roman times. Yep. Greeks, Those are actually. golf balls moving behind me. I thought it was thunder. Oh. Those are just golf balls moving. <laughs> I was very scared. I was like, oh, man, we got to get out of here. Uh, go to an event. That's what we should be doing. Game time. We're at an event right now, and it's fun. It's exciting. I can't wait to watch golf. Uh, the day that this comes out, I'm going to be out there with the Tiger Woods group. Just going to events is awesome. Game time is the best place for last-minute seats with up to 60% off your favorite events. Uh, take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account. Use the code for F O R E for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. How do you guys feel that the PGA Championship move from the last term of the year to or major of the year to the second major of the year? How do you feel that's gone? What are we five years into that now? Yeah, the first one was Beth Page. I think it's gone well. I mean, listen, if we were here in August, it'd be we would not be wearing hoodies. I'll tell you that. That's much. true. So I think it, it brought most of the country into play. You know, like they 
whenever they would have PGAs in the South, it would like remember you remember Bell Reef probably better than anyone. Oh, it was like the hottest. Man. It was like the hottest thing ever. Our boy did our boy Tiger Woods sweat at Bell Reef. Oh, yeah. yeah, he did. That you felt was... it through the TV. Do you yeah. remember he got was... the waves of the heat. Remember he was changing his shirt. In yes, the porter potty, that was insane. <laughs> he's going in. He's bringing like four shirts. Probably, shirt Superman probably weighed like <laughs> probably weighed like nine pounds on the seventh hole. I think it has worked because you can't write this tournament off. You have to go through it because when it was the right. fourth, it was just like all right. After the British, we're done. Yeah, football starting up. People yeah, lose it now. You have to focus on it. You can't just jump over it. So from, from my perspective, I think it has worked. And we talked about how many great finishes it's had. Whether or not that has anything to do with the schedule, I don't know. It but has it's been great. I think it has to do with the setup of the golf courses. Yeah, I think that they set them up where it's there's there's no trickery. There's no like oh I, some guys can fly this corner, some guys can't. Like a lot of guys are playing from the same spots, which tends to lead to bunch of leaderboards. And also with May, like there's a lot more potential for someone like Scotty to just keep it rolling. You know, yeah, you got the momentum. Yeah, true. Because it is it's nuts to think that we used to have the Masters, all the build up to it, and then a two month break, two months before another major championship is wild. Yeah. I'm grateful that it's the second one now. It's a Me much too. more condensed golf season. Yes, Fine. I agree. It is, and I but I and I will say, the British Open comes up fast. Yeah, right. In this like new one where it's like, wait, we're done. What's well, like, like July after, 18th or whatever it is? You're like done. Right. Well, it's like after every major, it's like well, the next one's three weeks away. There's Which no, is, there's no like uh, decompress time. It's like, all right, it's a great already... point. I think they actually nailed that. Yeah. Like what you're saying, you have to go through it. It makes it important. Um, it's something that, yeah, you really can't gloss over this anymore. Um, the range is literally on the same grass as the first tee. I've never really seen that. Yeah. At a pro event. It's a, it's a cool look. Shit, I didn't even notice that. Like they are like, if you're, Whoa. you know, a Sunday leader, you're going to hit your last drive and then you're going to walk. 35 steps of the first tee. It's kind of nice because sometimes, like, you know, they have to do a special range if they don't, if the course itself doesn't have a great range. And they like, I remember Oak Hill, it was kind of, they had to like drive around to the other side sometimes. It was a bizarre range. Yeah. So this is a nice one where they can literally just keep it rolling right from there. Everyone's going to hit the fairway on one. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) There's not a single guy that's going to miss the fairway on one. (laughs) It is, it's, um, it reminds me, I like a lot when courses mow. So at, um, Woodhaven on Monday. Yeah. Here in Louisville, they, um, they had the 18th green was mowed directly into their putting green, which was a Garden City Men's Club or Golf Club. They do that, thing. too. Yep. But, and this one was really cool because at Oakmont, they also do that. Like the ninth hole, I believe, is mowed into the, the entire practice green. So you can have like a 250 foot putt on there. Mm-hmm. But this one, they have their version uh, at Woodhaven of like a putting course, 18 hole putting course with crazy mounds. Like yeah. This will do at Piners, like the punch bowl. At Bandon. The Drumlin, is that? Drumlin's one. Aaron at Hills. Aaron Hills, yeah. yep. And they had that version of that mowed into, directly into the 18th green. So That's people awesome. that had like bladed a wedge or hit a wedge a little bit long would legit have like a 150 foot putt That's from the cool. middle of the practice That's screen cool. onto it. And that kind of reminds me of that. Do you get line? What if you're like right behind a hole on the practice screen? There is a, um, there is, they, they say you're not allowed to chip off of the, you know, fun putting green thing that has lights and all that too. So you have a free drop opportunity in like the rough. Got it. Got um, it. Which is like not ideal. No. Which also reminds me of one of my favorite rules is that the British Open is the only tournament that's really figured it out where if you get free relief from the grandstands, it's in like four foot high festival. They treat you like shit. <laughs> it's amazing. It's, it's great. Yeah. The drop zones always laugh out loud funny. It's like a little circle that's painted into knee high rough. <laughs> Literally like <laughs> it's tall. Tough Literally. shit. <laughs> Throw it over there. Yeah. yeah great. It's so good. Um, but no, I mean, it is, it's, it's major week boys. I, uh, I have no idea what to think about Tiger Woods. I would say I haven't heard this is probably going into a major championship. The least I've ever heard about Mr. Woods. Good job with the goatee I question. Asked, I told you did. We talked right about that on the show yeah. that. and then you made it happen and it went viral. And he, uh, he laughed. It was a genuine laugh. Too, it was, you know, I it agree. Was, it was good. Um, I, I he said, I, you know, my body's fine. I wish my game was sharper. That's kind of what I took away from it. Just, I'm just really happy that he's here. I can't wait to watch him play golf. That's really, that's the extent of it. Weren't there whispers he shot like a 62 or is that just state run media? Like, like, uh, where'd you hear that? It was like last week that he got in really early. I heard he's been here a while. Yeah. I don't know what to think of that. Like (laughs) the the energy levels are, you know, how long, how long. I said that yesterday. I wish that this guy would show up Wednesday night and just hit his first ball on Thursday. I know. Let's just see how it goes. Everything else is, I mean, why not try it? He said it that he ran, he, he basically admitted he ran out of gas at the masters. Yeah. He said, I did it for two rounds, you know. He's been here for a while, guys. When we went to the uh, distillery yesterday, a lot of people were talking about the Tiger was in town just like all week. Um, So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think he's probably trying out this new version of himself. Like, what is he like? He doesn't know his routine yet, probably. 
Yeah, and it's, I mean, it's always the, uh, I don't know if it's like chicken and the egg kind of thing, but it's like if he, he wants to practice more so that he can be sharper, but he can't practice more because then he'll be less healthy. He won't That's be right. able to walk. Seems like every first practice round, though, whoever like plays with them is like Tiger's fucking striping it. And it's like, oh, yeah. can we just have that just be on Thursday? Yeah, I almost think. I agree. I, I actually agree. Think that's your ticket, though, to like not getting kicked out of the Tiger Circle. Yeah, maybe. You want to play more practice rounds with him. You right. know, yeah. I think you kind of have to say that. Maybe. Yeah, I'm still waiting for someone to come off and be like, he hit it like shit, dude. Right. He's going to miss the cut. I don't know. <laughs> we all, would, we all... would murder them on this <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah. We would absolutely. <laughs> despise that person. Yeah. Imagine he plays a practice <laughs> round with like, I, the first thing that popped in my head is like when Mackenzie Hughes and he comes off and he's like, that guy sucks. <laughs> blacklisted. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely blacklisted. Yeah. Mackenzie did not do that, but if he no, did, no, he's Canadian, he he's be. way too nice. <laughs> um, Full range. I have a direct down the line view of Scotty Scheffler. Hitting. I've been keeping my eye It is just a joy to watch him hit balls. The ball flight is so incredibly perfect. And yet I, I know it's been said a billion times. It looks like he has made the worst swing of his life every time because yeah. of his footwork. Like, it's unbelievable, that guy. He falls over every shot. We've also he got- focuses on the alignment of his club and the, like, and the way that it sits behind the ball so much. If you notice how much he, he, he's like, like tweaking it, digs into it, stands up. Looks at his grip. Yeah, he always does looking do at his one grip. These, yeah, and then like makes like, dude, I'm talking every single long iron he's hitting. It's crazy how much these guys talk about grip. L- Ludwig uh, Ober was in the thing today, being like, "Yeah, when I hit bad shots, it's mostly my grip." Really? Which is like you you think of a grip as something you learn when you first play golf, and then never think about it ever again. I mean, I don't think about my grip Scotty's ever. Scotty's got one of those training grips it's on the tail every day. truck. Yeah, um, six iron, I think. It's a yes. six iron training grip it's crazy like you know these guys are the best players in the world but a lot of the stuff is like all right i gotta work on ball position and grip which is literally what beginners work on i'm trying to remember who it is one of the all-time greats has it might be sam sneed it might one has a book that somebody bought me and it's like literally called like how i play golf or something oh it's uh i think it's hogan no it's i think it's hogan i think it's hogan but it's like the five ways to play golf and the number one thing is grip the first thing in the book i read that how to grip the golf i mean i guess it is your only connection yeah and it's amazing how like you know i have gotten lessons you know we've all at some point gotten a little this and they legit are like oh yeah the whole game is your like um relationship to the club face and if it's open closed if it's whatever and they're like that is insanely manipulated by the way that you grip the golf club and i think like what trevor emelman might have said when we had him on the show before the masters and we were talking about scotty and we're talking about his swing and his footwork and all that and I think what he said, he said something effective, like his club face awareness. Yeah, like yeah his said this, he did. Is like off the charts. And that struck, that stuck out to me as like something I'd never really heard put that well. But like, you know, when I'm taking it back and we're out there, you're guessing. And when that oh, ball hits, the, you have no idea if it's open, close, you're hoping it's square. Yeah. Like that thought of him being conscious of where his club face is at throughout every swing is incredible. Ben Hogan's Five Lessons. I looked it up. That's ben Hogan's Five yeah. Lessons. It's a good book. Really I good. I got book. so many messages about that Bobby Jones YouTube video. Really? Yes. What'd they say? It, have you seen, were you on this pod yeah. when I talked about it? Yeah. Oh my God. First YouTube golfer. It's, uh, <laughs> they're just like, I, bro, the one, this one guy messaged me, he goes, I can't, in all caps, believe the part where he is in the bunker <laughs> and he just steps on the balls <laughs> and just kept smacking them out. And he, he rolled out three of them. He goes, dude, because mm-hmm. someone's like, what if it's, what, if, do, you, do you still open the, the, the face when it's, <laughs> your transatlantic voice so kills me. Do you still open up the face when it's plugged, uh, Bobby? And he goes, yeah, watch this. <laughs> Bang! Steps on it, plugs it into the, the bunker, and she goes, "Dude!" <laughs> and then a couple of days <laughs> after, we were laughing about the of the shots going over the camera. Rory, Rory made a video like yep, that, and I'm like, "Bobby Jones did this 80 years ago." Yeah, no, <laughs> nothing new under the golf. sun. Nothing new under the There's sun. Nothing new. No, not a just thing. The first ever YouTube golfer. Him stepping on balls is very funny. <laughs> yeah, wow. uh, it was like the, you ever see the guy that goes down the line with all the cans? Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm an even kind of Joe. <laughs> I've been there a long time ago. Yeah, I see that on TikTok all the time. <laughs> The most prestigious golf courses in the country have trusted Imperial with the design of their headwear for over 100 years. They were made the number one headwear in golf today. I'm rocking the Imperial hat right now. Cool, rope hat, comfortable, great, Same. good quality. Really good quality. Fits good. Um, you know, it's just, I don't know how to explain it. It's just a, a Imperial hats for me. You just know them when you, when you put them on that they... They just fit my head really, really perfectly. And um, that is something that you do not take lightly when you find a hat that fits you. It's everything. 
It's everything. It's honestly and everything. It's in crazy because growing up, I never, I never thought about like, does this hat fit my head? But right. Once you become an adult, it's you a have to crucial think about component. Totally. Crucial. Yeah. They have great designs, and the rope is so tight on it. A lot of ropes will be like super loose. Can't have a loose rope thick. on there. Yeah, it's very, it's very tight. Nice and tight. It's a great style. It's a great style. Uh, Imperial is also the proud partner. Proud partner. The PGA of America, the PGA Tour, the LPGA, the USGA, and is the official headwear of the AJGA. Licensed collections made in partnership with these organizations are available on their site. They include styles with event logos for the WM Phoenix Open, the Players' Championship, President's Cup, 2024 US Open, and the 2024 PGA Championship, which we're at right now. Uh, shop all Imperial's collections today at imperial1916.com and use the code BARSTOOL to get 20% off your first order. We're getting you 20% off of hats and all kinds of cool stuff right now. Um, that is imperial1916.com. Use the code BARSTOOL for 20% off. Be on the lookout for BARSTOOL Golf Imperial Headwear coming to your local pro shop soon. Uh, who else do we like this week, guys? Anybody? John Rahm is my oh. pick. Well, I've got. I saw that you're getting a little bit of heat. Yeah, so you know, you, you ranked rankings. John Rahm as number one. Yeah, I think. Well, I, just think he's, I think he's going to win. It's not that I think he's a better player than Scotty, or he's had a better year. I'm not a crazy person, but also if you, if I put Scotty one and it go, to, then it's just like a recreation of the fucking world rankings. Right. Got to make a pick. I pick. I put Scotty number one for the Masters. He won. I think Rahm's going to win this week. I think he's deeply, deeply motivated this week because I think. He, he put up a stinker in his title defense at the Masters. He was never in it, T45. Mm. And the last thing you want to do after making the move that he did is put up two consecutive stinkers in majors because then it's like, did he make a mistake, this, that, or the other? I think he's going to show everybody that he's still John Rahm. It wasn't that long ago that he was the number one player in the world, and he was the guy who was going to be, you know, win 10 majors. So, hey, got the people going. Yeah. We're in the clicks business. Yeah. That's the right move. Yeah. I said that to you. I said that. You're wrong, but that's the right move. <laughs> yeah, I mean the right. I mean that guy's clearly just number one. But I um didn't Scotty or uh, sorry John no. Rahm had a little bit of a interesting uh, presser. People got. I mean Aaron Oberholzer went crazy on him. That was wild. He said, "I want to wring his neck." Did you wait, see wait, that? wait, what that happened? That was insane. That, that was wild. So they asked Rahm about you lost know what that made me think he's losing it a little bit. What's, We're losing Aaron. The question was, you know, <laughs> what's it like being at a major, being on the other side, or you know, alluding to the fact that he's not on the PGA Tour anymore. And he said, you know, you guys keep on saying I'm on a different side. I'm still a PGA Tour member, whether I'm suspended or not. I want to support the PGA Tour. I love the PGA Tour. And, and you guys keep talking about sides. And then they cut to Overholzer and he's like, he doesn't get it. He doesn't get it. I'm incensed. I'm so mad right now. I want to wring his neck out through the TV. He said that. Good luck, he dude. <laughs> Good fucking luck, dude. I just couldn't believe he said like that. the strongest neck on tour. Right. Yeah. He, John Ram would beat the fuck out of Aaron. Oh, Oros. he would kill him. I mean, that's, just, that guy's I, a tank. I like, I, so I didn't miss that John Ram answer completely, but I like, he's been really playing that role. Yeah. And I, I feel like he's probably a little bummed. I know people have been saying that, but he's still like, he might be the biggest advocate of bringing this thing together. I think he thought that his move was going to bring it together. I think there, I mean, if we listen to Rory's press conference just now with, with, you know, Jimmy Dunn stepping down from the policy board, Rory said that, you know, I have very little confidence that a deal will get done. And then Jordan Spieth, the day before was like, we're making progress. Every time I hear something public, it's negative, but behind closed doors, it's positive. So there's there's different narratives coming from different sides of this thing. Some people like Dunn, Dunn said no meaningful progress has been made toward a deal. And then Rory supported him. And then you've got on the other side, you've got like Tiger and Spieth. So it seems like they're kind of split. Yeah, they're definitely split. Just never going to go away until it, <laughs> until it does. And I don't think it's going to be a long time. It's a huge deal. Like it's a, it's a, whatever deal does get done, will be the biggest golf landscape changing deal in the history of the game. Yeah, For sure. Tiger was like, we just got to figure it out, but like that, there's no date to when that's gonna. Like there's no <laughs> right. There's, no there's also no figuring it out where everybody's happy, and I think that's the problem. You yeah. need somebody where if you had a real commissioner who would just be like, this is what we're doing. And fucking deal with it. Everybody deal with it. Which it's nuts that it's not going that way because it's like, dude, guess what? Whatever we do, you fucking guys that play golf are still going to show up at the tournaments, play the best golf that you can, and then get a paycheck. Yep. And that's just like what's going to happen based on how you finish. And like that's the way it's been. That's the way it's going to be after. You guys don't need to worry about the formats and debating about. No, it's not your fucking. You go, you show up. You have your caddy, your cool little family, and your setup, and your coach, and your entourage, which we've seen out here. And you go play the golf. And that's well, like, that's really what they're doing. Well, there definitely shouldn't be golfers negotiating the deal. That seems, I agree with you. I think that's a little nuts, I think that's kind of where we're going. I yeah. hope. 
which it's like I don't. Spieth was saying that you know that's the narrative, and it's it, but it's the the board is actually balanced. It's impossible to know what what goes on behind closed doors, but the, you know the players definitely have a, a much bigger voice than they did at the beginning, and I think that was that was the opposition to Jimmy Dunn was that you know he made this deal, and I've I've, I've said this before on the podcast. You know I've spoken to Jimmy a number of times. And what he's always said, and it always sticks with me, is the you know the enemy of deals is people and time. And there was never going to be a deal that they were going to make in that context if they had a million different voices in the room. Right. And then the players said, "Well, who is this guy who just came in? You know, he's a deal maker. That's what that's what he does, and he has a relationship with Yasser, and and he's not he's not there anymore." I do see it. I mean, it is it is their future. It's their sport, so they want to have a say. But how much of a say? I think that's up for debate. In the end, the people that are on the tour that don't want the live guys back, they're just going to end up getting fucked, right? No one's going to give a fuck. At the end of the day, after all of, like, the, I feel like the waiting around and the figuring out is to, like, try and Scotty's keep those guys back. happy. Sky Shuffler's coming back. So here comes yeah, Sky Shuffler. Um, Hold on, just give us a second here. Sky's walking by. Sky's I'm gonna have to give. I'm going to have to give him a congrats, really? right? Scotty's okay. tall, man. Hey, congrats, tall. Scotty. Nothing. Fuck. It's over for 2. <laughs> that was a weird volume. <laughs> Where it wasn't Come on, like, man. That was loud enough. I don't bro. think it was. Guys, look at, look at the look on Alex Bush's face. <laughs> I don't Even think he Brendan heard. Jones I don't laughing. think he heard. I think it blended into everything. How's it going? I think you're Fuck, good. That was tough. Whole team. Whole team hates me. Yeah, you're, you're persona non grata for whatever reason. I love him so much. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> God, I love that guy. Fuck. We had him. We had him in the palm of our hands, man. Liberty National. He was just a little boy. He was just like, he had, he had nothing. He had nothing. And now he won't even look at me. You're close to being holding the boombox outside of his window. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting there. Throwing pebbles out. at the window. We're getting close. <laughs> We're getting real. I, gotta, I almost got to slip an apple tracker in your pocket so I know where you're at. <laughs> so you're not going to Scotty Scheffler's Fuck. house. I just w- fucking miss him. What is your guy's most recent text exchange? Is it Rico oh, Bosco-esque? Uh, it was congratulations. Hit him straight. Uh, it was congratulations, Scotty, <laughs> on the Masters. I can't um, believe that story. Congratulations, Scotty. Um, awesome stuff, man. Best of luck to you and Meredith in the coming weeks. Classy. That's and all I wrote. No, no response. Like, no, no, nothing. And uh, it is what it is. You know, it is what it is. All right. Yeah. But I again, I, I think all. I think um, everyone's trying to make everyone happy. And at the end of the day, someone's going to be in a meeting and they're just going to be like, "We got to just fuck over these guys." Every, like the guys that are really opposing it. Sorry, this is just the way of the world. So is. then the we live need- guys. They won. win. They're gonna win. Right? Like, oh, of course. I think they're gonna it's an win. Unavoidable outcome. It's an unavoidable win. So let's just fucking cut to the chase. Yeah. yeah this is. Yeah. Get these guys back. Just get them let in. Them, let them back in. Let them keep their money. It is what it is, bro. Yeah. They got the equity deal out of it. They got a, a lot little of bit things of money. happened to get to this point. A lot of mistakes. Someone's got to take ownership and be like, "Listen, we fucked up. We well, need these guys back." That's the thing. Rory swallowed his pride. He's been the number one yep. guy and was like, "All right, let's make a deal." And now we got this other subset of people who are like no so, i don't know if are, are they like no do they say i don't, they don't want to make the deal it's i'm speculating that's what rory seems to be <laughs> suggesting that's you know i'm that's, speculating and up, sure. i'm speculating over yeah here. that's what rory and Didn't, jimmy dunn i mean you know a guy like jimmy dunn was choosing his words extremely carefully yeah so to say no meaningful progress was that's a that's a I significant guess, thing to say i guess when they put microphones in front of cantley and spieth and tiger like what are they saying they're saying that we can't discuss it we're negotiating okay you know? Yep. Ridiculous. So that invites that speculation. Mickelson down there? Who's the lefty? That's Phil Mickelson. <laughs> Come on now, Dude, Phil. He's got a little um, lavender on there. God, he looked nothing like Phil Mickelson until I saw the lefty. Wow. He looks good. Still, still flushing it. great. I miss him playing senior tour events. That, that was, was me that when was, he did that. Dude. That was electric. The first three, he was like, give me those yeah. checks. I'm Dominated. Out of here. He played like once a year and just won. Yeah, he won. I think he won his first two events. Now he's a guy. If he walks by, he might. He we might be able to give him the mic fast enough. <laughs> I, I think so too. <laughs> you know he's I mean? like, I got some shit to say, yeah. man. I've been thinking about this for years. <laughs> give me that fucking microphone. Right. Scotty did a believe- full loop around Frankie Brilli so he wouldn't have to see him. Phil Mickelson might jump over this fence. That guy. I still have a pretty good DM relationship with Phil Mickelson. Do you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you guys, you, at one point, you and Frankie were tag team. We, we tried close. to tag team him. We were close. We got, he responds every time. Yep. But it's always of kind of a long winded no. 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 I got yeah. this going yeah. on. I got that going this, on. This information is going to come out. There's a lot of basically every time it turns into 
I would love to do it, but based on legal stuff, we got to, you know. Yeah, wait for can, all the votes to come yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty, exactly what it is every time. And I'm like, well, it's been a couple of years we've been doing these messages back and forth. So let's get you on this goddamn podcast. He's got us at arm's length. How about that guy won the PGA championship like three years ago? Three years ago. It's still, it's still a fever dream. I, I still can't believe it what actually happened. What the fuck, dude? I'll never insane. forget me and Trent were standing on the the driving range just like this at the PGA Championship in Kiowa and I looked over and I said imagine being Phil Mickelson right now that guy just doesn't have it anymore he was out there for five hours it was the worst grinding, possible course for him too grinding he was sweating he was yelling at Couldn't his find team it. throwing his was like driver. throwing shit and then I'm like I was like bro Phil's losing his mind he won <laughs> and he won he crazy dude. Dude. Maybe range maybe is a trap, you should, dude. should throw you come on fucking... here and you, you can you can convince yourself into throw a driver anybody winning dude the um the US Open at Brookline, the country club, yeah. when Joel Damon contended, which yeah. was a big part of the first Netflix season. And I remember that Wednesday before, and it was either Tuesday or Wednesday, but I was out following. It was a great group. It was the Spring Break Boys and then Joel Damon were like the practice round group. And they played around. nine holes. Yeah, You can just go You're good. Go yeah, 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 go for yeah, it. Nice little cameo there. Guy's got a Royal Dornick thing That's on. That's a serious camera. How good is that? So anyways, practice round, they're out the thread there. And Joel was the only one after nine holes who he had to go find something I could tell. Him and Gino were like, they were not feeling it. And I remember thinking like, God, I'd love to put money on him this week, but like he's clearly struggling to find something. Yeah. Had like the best performance of his career. You just never know. You, really? you just truly never. I don't think they know. You know, you hear all the time the guy's like, yeah, I hit it like shit on the range and then he shot 62. So that's crazy. It's golf. Who would be the most surprising winner this week? Tiger Woods. Blocky. No? <laughs> Blocky. It's tough hearing those. I, I, I have a feeling he's going to shoot two under tomorrow. <laughs> it's tough. We don't. We don't. Yeah. Kidding I me? really do. I have a feeling he's going to shoot two under tomorrow. <laughs> this guy loves the moment. You serious? You sure? <laughs> Come on. We were with Fab Perez last night. I go he in. Does, he does Rory. a really good one too. Rory, that go in. Go in. <laughs> <laughs> Fab Perez does like the long stare. He was like, "Serious?" <laughs> I, he had me crying last night. <laughs> Damn. We had quite the night last night. It was a. It was like a a meet. It was. It was almost like when the. When the leaders are holding like the orb, is it an orb? The leader. Oh, you're talking about when they go to Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. When Trump's yeah, got that one yeah. where he's there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 like yeah. They have like a leaders yep. conference. Okay. And they all touch the orb. It was like that for for uh, YouTube golf. It felt like it was so a general like, assembly, uh, a mob meeting of the families, like the head of the yeah, crime family. It yeah, was. yeah, it was a meeting of the families. Yes, it was. And it, it was, was a meeting of the families in an environment where there was a lot of other big golf people around. A ton too. of golf like people. Like we were just there. ignoring all of them. We were just here comes Blocky too. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, we had Matt Kendrick from Good Good. He's the CEO of Good Good, the founder with um, with Garrett, and right we had Fat Perez, and then we had you know me Riggs. We had Brendan, and we were all just like talking about like the landscape of like what we think this thing's gonna go to and where we all c- should kind of go to. It was fucking awesome. I loved it. Um, just great guys. That was my first time ever meeting Kendrick, like in a real setting. I feel like I've like sh- shook his hand. I think once. you probably met him quickly at the uh, Desert at the Open. Desert Open. Yeah, for like there. a second. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, nice guy. Makes me laugh. Um, and he's fucking smart as shit. He's smart as shit. Yeah, he's good, a good dude. Big shit. So. He's a really good dude. He. Um, yeah, but we're trying to figure stuff out. I think so. For French Lick, I know they're doing that. The week that we have two Barstool Classics in Chicago, so we're it. trying to figure out what the hell. If we're going to be a part of that or whatnot. So there's all kinds of that going on. Trips. We've got two bars of classics the two days that they want us out at French Lick. And it's like for the practice round and for the for the, the broadcast round. It's like, man, we've got – those are two big events for us in Chicago. Right. So it's tough. So we're going to figure something out. We've got a lot of plans with them. Hopefully it makes its way out of the bar and into like a real – formal like conversation because mm-hmm. um, you know I, I was getting excited i was getting real excited there was yeah. like i mean you'll you'll like it was like there were islands talked about like maybe we're gonna buy an island uh, hawaii or something oh like i would that. go to hawaii for sure you know i know you would too you're only five we're, hours only five hours away from me yeah, it's oh, a yeah. long way you're a us, frequent but. vacationer to hawaii aren't you i went with my family every year growing up you have yeah. to be ashamed of it it's, it's nice. amazing i went it's to nice. woodlock pines it's nice i'm a lucky kid we went to lake of the ozark i know it i went to i went to woodlock pines um, quick plug for her side gig. Watch it. Minnie yeah. Lee. Really he's, good. He's awesome. Great edit. He's a great edit. Jared killed it. Love Brendan the chef Bush hat. brought the chef hat out there. He's just a, he's just an awesome player. I'm, I'm rooting really hard from this week. Good kid. Hits it a mile. Go watch it. A lot of the side gigs have taken off. And if some don't, it's still just great to have that just in our portfolio. Yeah, it's just something different. A lot of the comments were like, this is like, this is fucking awesome to yeah. see 
a guy like I, I just sit here how long was that episode it was like 51 minutes 50 minutes under an hour and you get to watch this guy walk through all of his shots talk about what he's what, what he's feeling what he's thinking and how fucking good he is like yeah. yeah it shows up when you watch him on tv but not that not that much no he he played great it was it was great we had an awesome time in vegas and we're gonna keep those rolling so i have yeah, close to cool. the pin if we want to do it we're gonna do some close to the pin i uh I, I want to say on that too with side gig how awesome it is because we all love on the TV coverage the player caddy interactions, right? Like we get fired up for that. That's like golf nerd. You're injecting it into your veins. And that's a fucking hour of that. That's that was the the pitch that I made to all my previous employers, and it didn't work out. And they said no. And they said no. Well, you know, Dan, we might cancel it now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so how did Glocky get into this again? Let's just he finished T15. Oh, so that yeah. up and down last year. That's what it was. Was huge because it locked up T top fifteen. Wow. I mean, he probably would have got it through the Club Pro um, Championship, but he was automatically in this year. Wow. I think there's actually 21 Club Pros because they 20 plus block got in from. Is that right? I think that's right. Yep. What do they call it? The special 20 or something? Uh, the Corbridge Financial Team. No free ads. They call it the uh, oh special 20. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I got you. Team of 20. Yeah. 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 I love seeing my guy Tillery out here grinding with Seth. <laughs> I just love seeing that guy. He is amazing. He's the best. Okay. He's absolutely the best. He always kind of looks like he's hoping nobody like ends all of this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? he's, he's very like, he's always looking around. <laughs> he gets out of town like just in time for someone to be like, where is he at again? That's exactly like, oh, I'm yeah. traveling to my next guy. Tillery is like the wind. He's just sort of here and gone. It's and like Zach Galifianakis. He's like, he broke in and he's like waiting for someone to catch him. Absolutely. All the time. All the time. He's working with Sepp Straka, who is playing <laughs> unbelievably. So shout out to my guy, Tiller. Uh, yeah, he's down there on the range, and I, he's like looking over his shoulder. Like, Look at him. He's not even looking at Sepp. He's just <laughs> when you look watching up, Blocky. When you look, up, when you look up head on a swivel, that man's, that man's face you know, is right there. John Tillery always knows where the exits are. He's just <laughs> yeah. at all. He's just like, I know where I need to go. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking best. Oh, man. <sighs> Uh, are we doing close to the pen? Yeah. We're going to do close to the pen. Let's do a little close to the pen. Close to the pen, by the way, brought to you by our dear, dear friends at Fireball Whiskey. Dear friends. We sat at this nice, wooden, proper wooden conference table yesterday. It was yeah. awesome. With the folks from Fireball. CEO Jake. Sazerac CEO Jake, who's big job. the man. Do they have like 500 That's brands. what I'm saying. That's a big like it's job. It's not just Fireball. No, we, dude. He sat there. Halfway through the Winkle, meeting, we were like, bland. why are you here yeah, We us? legit <laughs> said, you, you have to have better things to do than this. Wellers, like everything, and, man. And he, I got to give, there are a couple big highlights from the slideshow. Mm. One of them was drunk Frankie Borelli. Dude, they have the first the picture <laughs> of the slideshow was it was, it, you. Was, it was basically like saying like how the partnership's been going what we think is going to go in the future and so the first one is just me holding up a shot at the masters show and i'm just like this <laughs> barely away <Fat, laughs> I mean, like like one eye open it was it was incredible oh, barstool golf sign, sign my, my flag 100 we will we'll, we'll be right, right after, after the show it. you want to go one at a time man. right now or do we want to do that's, that's an honor when, when people ask you guys because i'm in the to sign you just say yes and sign you can't say no well, so I, I, get I, it. I, 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 say, I say to them, I say, uh, whatever other names are that you have on here, I'm going to make this thing less valuable. Correct. I always write like Barstool on it or like Apologize. something. It's, I do uh, the Breaking 90 sign. Yeah. Like, especially because I, I got asked the uh, I just write rigs. The other week. That's good. You know, That's on the putting yeah, green. I don't, I don't like, know what else to do. These guys give me so much shit now. The players. They're like, oh, damn. Like, you sign an autograph. So I kind of want to not for that purpose. Yeah. It's a weird spot. You got to sign it. You got to yeah. sign it. You got to sign it. These are the people, these these are are people that. These are a bunch of fucking stoolies, man. I pay my rent. You bring this thing over here? Yeah, you're right. put gas in the Okay, right that's there. what I needed. That's what I needed. You're putting gas in the it, tank, electricity in there. We can, we, can, we can cut the pot and we'll come right back. Let's do that. Give this to them. No, no, we'll keep talking while we do this. I got no issue with that. So I'll do a little fireball. I'll keep talking about the fireball, yeah, guys. I want to say something. Because the, uh, so the fireball whiskey, guys, there is, and, and go make sure you get the, the uh, 50 milliliter shooters are perfect. They're perfect for the golf course. Throw them in your bag. When the beverage cart rolls around, grab a bunch, rip them. You can just throw them right away. You don't have to worry about glass for all that stuff. There was a couple big highlights. One was Dan got a huge shout out for side gig. Yep. And he was rock, rocking the bib and all that. And then Four Play Tracker. Yep. No. Four Play Tracker was all over the meeting. I brought him up. I mean. Because he was in the photo. I'm like, and, and front and center is a guy named Four Play Tracker. And we got into talking about him for a long time. The CEO. Four Play Tracker was in the meeting for 10 minutes. Jake, the CEO, the CEO of Sazerac, was like, you got to tell me more about this Four Play Tracker character. Yep. And we went on for 10 minutes. We're telling him stories about Tracker. And so, f folks, I think we said it on the last show, but 
foreplay tracker was a victim of a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> 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 for, for, I hate to laugh. We hate uh, to laugh. For his um, law law practice. You know who else uh, got internship. swindled? Our guy Big Ev at Barstool. He got. Mm. He, remember he got uh, told to show up. He did to an, inter- to an interview at Ended Barstool. Working out for him. And he showed up, and it was fake. And Dave just ended up like hiring him anyway. Yeah. So then it working out. He's in all these pump up play- videos. Like I'm here. I'm chasing yeah. my dream. Yeah. I'm gonna make it happen. Yeah. And then we got there, and he was like, "We're not meeting with you." No, but it worked. <laughs> Still here, he's still crushing it. Yeah, foreplay it. tracker was a good 15 minutes in the Sazerac meeting. Um, my Unbelievable. Hi- my highlight from the uh, entire um, trip was not only was it like the tasting and the fireball and all of that stuff, but we said they have like 500 brands. We got to see a lot of the stuff. They said that we couldn't take any videos or really take any pictures of it, but they said that we could mention it to some people, which we'll talk about on the podcast. They have like this ex- experimental stuff that they're doing over there that – so we learned a lot about the uh, bourbon process mm-hmm. and like how it becomes bourbon. Yeah, I put a bunch of pictures up on my Instagram story, and people are like, "That looks like yellow, like sludge. It's nothing." And it ends up being beer, and then they heat the beer, and then the evaporation comes happen, whatever, and the steam turns into the liquor and or the alcohol, and then they put that in barrels. How cool was the story of they had clear just alcohol from you know corn, like fifty one percent corn, so it, it, it it's a uh, it's a whiskey, and they would they would float it or they would basically take a boat and they'd go down the Mississippi River and all the way around down to New Orleans where all the people were. Yeah. And by the time it got there, after eight months, it was aged. And the people eight were, months from where? From Kentucky? From yeah, right. That's how said. long it would take to get to New Orleans. Yeah, yeah New, New Orleans. Orleans. From yeah. from Bourbon, like Bourbon, Virginia is what it originally was. And then once they yes. Kentucky became a state, it became Bourbon is like the actual county town. town yeah. So like, of we Bourbon, want some Kentucky. of that bourbon. So now right. for something to technically be so considered bourbon, it has to be from eight weeks. Eight months. Eight months. Eight, Eight months. months. Yeah, yeah they never knew that keeping something in a barrel for that long would make the make a change different. Right, bourbon. Get bourbon, bourbon experts know Nothing. that it was in, bad. Timing. What they put in the barrels is clear, and then the thing that turns it brown is inside the barrel. Right. It's all the stuff in the barrel, which again is probably pretty elementary for bourbon lovers, but for us that was mind. So anyway, so when you put these barrels in yeah. these huge warehouses where they're going to live forever, right? Um, 20 years, whatever, and they're going to end up being $20,000 barrels of, of whiskey or, or at least bottles of whiskey. Um, as you know, the seasons go on, it gets hotter and it gets cooler, depending on where you put the barrel, it expands, it contracts, and the, the temperature will rise it and it will fall or whatever. And that's how the aging process continues. And some of it evaporates. All of, so as it, as it gets hotter or whatever, it'll evaporate over years, over years. Yeah, because evaporate. by the time they usually take it and bottle it, it's only like, what, a third of the actual... Right, so if you have a 20-year-old barrel, so much of that has evaporated. You only have a little bit left. That's why it's so expensive. Yeah. So now they're experimenting with some stuff at the Sazerac at this um, Buffalo, Buffalo Trace, Trace Distillery. Distillery that we got a little chance to see where they're temperature controlling this room. Warehouse P. Yeah, with this, they're, they're temperature controlling a room so that you can leave a barrel in there and it will not evaporate, but it'll still, because of barometric pressure. Still age. It'll still age. You're it'll nailing us it. right now. Dude, so you paying like attention yesterday. 80 years can go by mm. and they can still have enough in there to bottle it 100 years like you know what i mean it's yeah. never been done it's like because wine status you've never been able to do it because yeah. it always evaporates 25 years might be your max right it's crazy so now it's like i mean we looked at one that said like 1995 on it and he's like that's a full barrel i was like holy fuck yeah. it was very very like cool. that's in the room like needed a passcode to get into it huge they have a doors. master distiller not to be confused with a masturbator no 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 a master very different. distiller there's only he been might five. be a masturbator but you don't there's know there's been only five since like 18 18- Oh five. Did you, did you guys get a we got, get we got eyes on that guy? Him. No, they said he doesn't like people. He just likes whiskey. He just kind of walks that's, around. That's kind of what I expect from the That's what you want to hear out of your mouth. He'll walk around that special room and he'll like tap some open and check them. Harlan and Wheatley. Them. Harlan Wheatley. That is a Bro, his master picture is like an old school picture. Not even though he's like fifty. Right, like because he's next to like guys who live. No, they said when you get that Blanton. job, you lit you 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 do it until you die. Yeah, it's like Supreme Court. You die in a job. to be a master distiller at Buffalo Trace than to be the president. You die by just. Drowning in a barrel is pretty much so what So, name Harlan Wheatley. Like, I was born Trent Ryan. I'm not going right. to be a master distiller at Buffalo Nothing. Trace yeah, Distillery. No chance. Harlan Wheatley. Saw a lot of corn yesterday, though, which was nice to see I was, you around that. I was, <laughs> you look comfortable. I was good. saying to Frankie, the way that that you. place smelled was the way that the place where I was a security guard right. smelled. Because it was a corn plant that I used to work at. So, that took me back. I was nostalgic. I just never knew that Damn. beer turned into whiskey. Trivia for you. Okay. How many bottles of Ooh. bourbon do you think you get out of one barrel? I don't know this. Did he tell us this? I mm-hmm. asked him, mm-hmm. so he, I know the answer. So mm-hmm. a barrel is barrel is what I'm thinking of. Is a big old barrel, baby? Oak. A lot yeah. of them are made out of oak. twenty-five. Whoa, 
you got to be hundreds, maybe thousands off, right? I believe he said 200 to 215. I think that's okay. right. So 10% is yeah. 25. 215. No, I wouldn't have known. I would have, I could have been I off the planet. I thought it was I don't know. I, I know. How many I'm barrels so... you have to have? Think about how much whiskey is bought across the country. <laughs> yeah. I know. Well, that's the thing. Damn that, barrels that's what they, you need. But that's what they were saying. A lot of what they're doing now as like Jake, the CEO, what he has to do is basically just buy warehouses. Yeah. Right. They got to keep and this shit space, somewhere. Yeah. Right. I took a picture of this. Is it called? It's a silo, right? Where they put all the corn. Sure. So they have three of them and they're higher than, they look like, they look like skyscrapers. Yeah. They have to they're fill huge. them up every single day. He says that if they don't fill them up to the top every single day, they'll only have enough for one and a half days worth of and making these whiskey. things are uh, massive. It's, it's, it's a crazy operation. Another Bottom question line. for you, trivia. Oh yeah, we go. Their biggest warehouse, which they have a bunch of, how many barrels do you think they can house in there? Oh yeah, that number was insane. This is what you get for not being on the tour. 10,000. Not the worst guess, 55,000. 55,000 barrels. And they'll be These there for 10, 15, 20, 30 years. Huge, I want, we walked by dude. one. He goes, that in, in, in 2048, that'll be Pappy. Like Pappy Van Wyn. I'm like, holy fuck. That's man. crazy. Just sitting yeah. there. Just, just so much of that business is just finding space. Um, yes. Yeah. And then the last thing we'll That's say, it. we're going to get too close to the pin. Is this is all one average. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, I think it's interesting, <laughs> man. No, if you like drinking, the thing when we like... meet the CEO and we hang out with the people, it's like, it's just, they're, they're a awesome. lot of bourbon lovers out there. Tons. Maybe, you know, they're going to be like, oh, fuck. I didn't know that they It's also that experience was so cool. We have to talk about it. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the drink of the summer is going to be Dragonade. You mix, dude, I'm telling you right now, you mix Lemonade and Fireball. Ooh. You would never think. It's an really interesting good. combo. It's like a cinnamon flavor. It's yeah. Lemonade. You have one sip and you're. it's called Dragonade. The go-to. There it is. If you're at your club and you have Fireball and you're sitting at the bar and it's a hot day and you're out on the porch and you're just mm. looking out, out at a golf course. I'm picturing I'm picturing Payne's Valley right now. You're up there oh, in the cabin and you have a she nice cold, yeah, I did, a nice cold glass of lemonade and you take that Fireball 50 milliliter shooter <laughs> and you pour it right in there and you give it a little spin and it's called a Dragonade. You're going to fucking love it. I know why you said Payne's Valley too. You're going there this year. I am going there. Yeah. I'm going there. I'm very Ooh, excited. Guys. Top of mind for it. Sixteen guys. Sun just came out. Um, yes, I do have sixteen guys. I actually have one of our guys on the uh, reserve list in case one of the guys can't make. It. His name is Ooh. Brendan Jones. Hey, yeah. Figured, you know, that's a great reserve. He came list. out there with us. He filmed it. He didn't really get to play. He played the one day. It's like come out here and fucking have a. Have Brendan a week. Jones is in one right now. Have a week. Yeah, he is. He got fucking shit face <laughs> last night. <laughs> he got fucking shit face last night. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Are you hitting the links this weekend? The professionals are. Be right there with them by getting in on all the tee to green action at DraftKings Sportsbook. We love DraftKings. DraftKings is incredible. I have made my pick, which is Roy McIlroy. I've got a few other picks on there. Roy's uh, plus 750. Got a few other picks that kind of sprinkle on a hole in one, I believe, Trent, is like plus 110 for the week. Okay, I like that. I think right around there is what I looked at. Um, from the first shot through the final pot, DraftKings Sportsbook has you covered with same game parlays, live betting, odds boosts, and so much more. If you're new to DraftKings, you got to check this out. New customers bet 5 bucks to get 150 in bonus bets instantly. Last night, took the Edmonton Oilers money line. It made hanging out of the bar phenomenal because they pulled through. Yeah, I had uh, on the DraftKings Sportsbook, here in Louisville, I had the Edmonton Oilers on the 60-minute line, the three-way bet, and they blew the game with a minute and 30 seconds left. It was they, they, the the uh, Canucks tied it up, and then so I looked at Brennan. I said, "That's just the biggest loser ever." And then 30 seconds later, with 30 seconds left in the game, Edmonton scored and won in regulation. It, it was. was out of control. What a happy thrill, and that's because of DraftKings Sportsbook. Yep, it was a very, very, very fun night. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code 4. New customers bet 5 bucks and get 150 in bonus bets instantly. That's code 4, F-O-R-E, only on DraftKings. The crown is yours. All right, let's do closest to the pin. All right, closest uh, to the close pin. pin. Brought to you by Fireball Whiskey. Great uh, stuff. Closest. Alex Bush, do you want to give us updates? You got updates? <clears throat> yes, I do. Ooh, that, that heat is coming down. All right. It's last hot week. Louisville. All right. Louisville. Last week, no rigs. Oh, yeah, these were mine. Caught up on some points here. Combined points for Jalen Brunson in games three and four versus the Pacers. Okay. We all skyrocketed. He only scored 44 combined points, so. How many? Yeah, 44. Yeah, well, he missed in the whole second quarter yeah. in game, what was it, That's three? Wait, yeah. Yeah. Did oh, I, sorry, I'm this? too far. Come over here. Yeah, yeah. Come on the podcast. Just oh. step over here. We can't hear you. Yeah, so. Here, here comes here. Alex Bush. So, on games over, one and two. Come on over, baby. I, I, can't, I can't reach that far. Okay. okay. Games one yes, and two, can. or games three and four, 
Look how much slack Pacers you got. versus Knicks. Sorry. I want you standing here on the X, down the X, and face the camera. Yep. Okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, 44 points, so Frankie Borelli. Nice. 61 points takes that. Wow, we were really Second was off. views on Kendrick's diss track, Not Like Us, by Monday. Ooh. It was 35.1 million. Okay. And I was the only one really close with 36. Whoa. Dan had 33, and you guys were both above me. Yeah, I was at 37 somewhere. Birdies for Alistair Doherty, round two. Oh. Myrtle Beach Classic. Let's go. Six total, so Dan and I both had five. Wow. Wow. I think I said four. And then the high temperature in Sfoden, <laughs> Slovakia, <laughs> on Sunday, 72 <laughs> degrees. Whoa. Dan Rappaport nice at 71 degrees. Let's go. Out. Those See, are good ones. I'm well, bummed I, I missed that. I couldn't out. think of a fourth one, and I literally went on so it was a nice Google day. and was like random place generator, found Svod in Slovakia, <laughs> and I was like, what's the temp going to be? Because I didn't nobody like nobody. Can knows. I hear the guesses for that? Do you know what all the guesses were yeah. for the Slovakia one? They I weren't, guess. They weren't that far There's off. There's a crew okay. of guys in, what was it, Svod in Slovakia, who so, had a, just a great day. It was right. 71 Yeah, it degrees. was uh, 61, 58, you know? 71, 69. Yeah. Well, you guys are right there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's what was the other one we did Albuquerque one time? Yep. Yeah. I tried to pick a place where you wouldn't have any idea what the climate was. No clue, dude. No clue. Okay. All right. I got no points. All right. So, that's so the points points right now, Trent Ryan, 25, Riggs, 22, Whoa. Dan, 21, 22. Frankie, 19, Alex, oh, 13. Tight now. You, oh, got, lucky. Tight. you got lucky, Riggs. I got no points. My lead didn't I didn't lose any. These guys are chopping like at, our, at our heels a little bit. But. Okay. All right. We're on the grounds of the PGA Championship. So all four questions this week pertain to the PGA Championship. Are we doing the honor system or what are we doing? Yeah, we're texting. We're just going to say it. We're just going to say we it. We should all say it at the same time. Okay. That's like fine. That one. I got no yeah. issue with that. Okay. Honor system. As we discussed earlier in the podcast, Scotty Scheffler will be without Ted Scott on Saturday. Wow. There'll be a, a friend on the bag, Tour Chaplin. We are assuming Scotty makes the cut. Does Tour Chaplin now get 2.5% of Scotty's winning? It's a great It's a great question. Throw it in the church basket. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's probably donated. <laughs> yep. Um, what will Scotty Scheffler's score be on Saturday? All right, we're going to do We're going to say it at the same time. It's a number or to par? It's a number. Yeah. Okay. I'm I believe ready. it's par 71 this week. I need to look that up. We're all just going to say it at the same time. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll. And then, and then we'll you, then you can it. say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I got it. Ready? Uh, I'm just trying to see what the score is. No, he hasn't played yet. Par Dan. 71. Okay. 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 Ready? One, two, three, 68. 68. All right, we're all in 68. I said Bill. 68. Six, seven. Okay. 68. All right, 68. 68. All right, so 68. three 68s and two 67. I wanted to make this one where someone like might actually get all four right, but we'll see. Okay, ready? 21 club pros. I believe it's 21. 20 plus Michael Block are in the field this week. How many club pros will make the cut? How many made it last year? I think one. It's, it's usually like zero or one. Was it, is Sometimes it, it's two. It's, it's, it's not. All right, we ready? Yep. One, two, three, zero. Zero. Okay. You got zero also? I said two. I said zero. Okay. Zero? Zero. Zero? I said zero. We're just anti club pros two? this two. year. Oh, you huge blocky you guy over miracle. there. Huge Jesus. blocky guy over there. <laughs> Blockhead. Um, all right. Number three Tiger Woods' finishing position. Now, you can, you can say miscut. Mm. You can say, you know, withdraw. You could say anything you want, or you could just say a number. We're not, don't say T. Just say the number that you, the, the place that you think he's going to finish. You're really okay. commanding us around here. Yeah. It's good to have the guidelines. for you, Dan. It's All good right. have guidelines. One, two, three. Missing 43rd. Sixth. That's 43rd would be pretty good. 23rd. 23rd? Yeah. Wow. You guys play all the time, Dan. Yeah. I said 31. So, no, you didn't. So I did. Oh, my God. Why? So I did. He. Oh, my God. Roll back the tape. What'd you I said, said 31. That's a squash guy. You no squash everybody money. every What'd time. What'd you say? I said 66. Okay. I said 23rd. What did I say? Is that right? 23rd? He makes. He always makes the cut. Like He has so much pride in making the cut. I just don't know if it'll last four rounds. All right, last one. I said 23rd. Weather said warning. Miscut. Me. Whoa. Who will be the low Canadian in the field? There are five Canadians playing. Taylor Pendrith, Adam Svensson, Adam Hadwin, Mackenzie Hughes, and Corey Connors. All right? Yeah. Okay. One, two, three. Corey Connors. Connors. Hughes. All right, we were all over the place there. Who'd you say? Corey Connors. Connors. Adam Hadwin. Hughes. Connors. God damn it. Damn. All right. That's closer to the pin. All right. Yep. Come on, Alex. Shout out to Fireball. That's huge. Someone could get all four of those right. That's uh, Well, yeah. the Tiger finish, if he misses the cut. Someone, a lot of people will guess miss cut. Did so we get some cut. MCs there? I said MC. He said MC. That's fucked up, Trent. I, you know, this is what it is. Is what it is. Yeah, there'll, be a lot, there'll be a lot of points there. There's a lot of two-pointers there, just for getting it right on the nose. All um, right. 
How long have we been going? It's fucking hot out here. Just man. over an hour. Just over an hour. Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah it's like right? it's tough to leave because you got all these guys out here, man. My lower back's starting to hurt. I need to like sit down. But we um, haven't gotten anyone. Everyone's just kind of ignored us. What? You're starting to sweat. Oh yeah, which, I'm, which, I'm which very sweaty. Fatigue. I didn't no, put on no, sway. I said. I didn't oh, put on. Yeah. I didn't put on deodorant. My yeah. mom says that she watches all of our videos. She's like, "You're always swaying." Yeah. I'm like, "I sway I'm a lot tired. too." I sway a ton. We would in uh, in hockey during the national anthem. At the, yeah. Everybody lines up on each blue line, typically for the national anthem. Yeah. And it's a really bad look to do this. Everybody would do this when you're on skates. You have to. And so you would have to very consciously to not look like a buffoon out there and turn it into like a circus where everyone's doing that. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> you would have to very consciously try to just stand still, which is hard to do. Oh, Father's Day merch. Father's Day merchandise. We did something a little different where we each have our own bucket kind yeah. of. We have like a curated which I, selection. Which I like. Me too. Um, Father's Day merchandise is out. If you have a father, most people do. Uh, you should get your father merchandise for Maybe Father's well. Day. If you want to get, even if you have a brother who's a father or whatever the situation might be, there's a lot of dads out there. Dads are incredibly important. Father's Day line coming around the corner. Great gear in there. We got new polos. We got hoodies. We hats. got shirts. We got hats. Everything we're wearing stuff. right now, like the hats, obviously the shirt right there, um, the polo that you're wearing, my new Peter Millar polo. Uh, that one's Hoodie nice. that I'm wearing that right now really nice. is great. You don't want this to sneak up on you. Let's, let's treat our dads good this year. Let's make sure that we get them stuff. Um, you know, get it in now. It's a month from now. I think it's, what is it, June 16th? I think that's right. Um, it's US Open Sunday. So, yeah, make sure that you get this all right now. I'll be with my father while and While it's Me still knows. available. Some tears and, involved. Uh, right yeah, oh, sure. just don't oh. wait. You don't want to be rushing around. All that your dad's done for you. You I don't want to rush around. I sent my dad a, a polo for Father's Day, one of ours, and my mom sent me a picture, and all my dad said was, very comfortable. Awesome. There you go. Gary Ryan approved. Very comfortable. <laughs> Gary Ryan said the polos That's are huge. very comfortable. That's, <laughs> That's great. That's what we needed. Um, we're going to do a little From the Gallery, boys. Okay. You excited yeah. for that? I am. From the Gallery is brought to you by TaylorMade Golf. Fantastic. TaylorMade Golf. I we know. can see the TaylorMade truck in here. so sunburned. It's actually disgusting. I put on Patrick Cantlay's sunscreen today. Yep. Did you? Yeah. You did. We were talking to Joy LaCava for a while. One of the greatest guys He's in the world. Yes, He's the best. And yeah, you needed sunscreen. And he was went, Cantlay there? Yeah, no, he was. he was there, but he was, he was you he know. He wasn't paying attention to anyone. He was adjacent to a conversation with us, for sure. Uh, but Joey was right there. Joey was being very funny during the whole thing. He was... <laughs> well, Frankie, like, me and Frankie walked up to him first, and Frankie didn't even say, like, hey, how's it going? Good to see you, Joey. He was like... Ah, boys are slipping. That series is slipping away because Joey's a big Ranger fan. That's what, you don't Joey, say hi to me? <laughs> he's the best, dude. Um, but yeah, I was. I could tell that Joey Lacava had done a very recent application of sunscreen. I said, I got a crazy question. You got any sunscreens? Okay, I went and got some out of the bag and, and put it on. Um, point being, TaylorMade Golf, which is awesome. They, uh, they sponsored from the gallery. And if you're not familiar with the QI-10, it is the most dominant club with the most dominant players in the game right now. Nelly Korda setting records. She won five events in a row on the LPGA Tour, including major championship. She's a QI-10 Max user, I believe. We got Scotty Scheffler, who's world number one, except in Dan's world. He is a QI-10 user. And then we've also got Roy McIlroy, who's playing maybe the hottest golf going right now. Two wins in a row. He absolutely dusted Xander Shoffley on Sunday. He's a QI-10 guy. So if that tells you, that should tell you everything you know. TaylorMakeGolf.com. Go get a fitting Go check out the QI-10s. They're amazing. Um, Adam from Alabama. Last week, after a mediocre drive, I had about 190 into a par 4 to a front pin. Hit my approach just in the front of the green. Rolled into the hole for an eagle. Played the same ball for a few more holes before I realized I should probably save it. Question. Is it lame to hold on to an eagle ball and potentially display it in my home office? Love the pod. Fuck yeah, the haters. That's that's lame. It just depends how bad you are at golf. Correct. That's yeah. That's kind of what I was thinking. But it's I not just, cool. I don't. Yeah, it's not. I don't think you can display it. Can't display it. That's the lame part. I think you can keep it and be like, this was good. This is like a, an important part of my golf journey. But I don't think you need to put it on the wall, take it to a trophy store, and be like, this is my birdie that I got on this or my eagle. You gotta that have I got. higher aspirations than an eagle. Did he say he hit a bad drive? Mediocre drive. So he had a mediocre drive and he had 190 <laughs> into the pin on the par five <laughs> and apparently he sucks. Right. How long was his par five? Right. 395 yards? Right. Damn, we're really shitting on this guy. Fucking throw that ball in the trash. <laughs> Adam from Alabama. I have my Al first eagle ball. Is that, that You have different? it? See, yeah. I think that's fine. Like, if it's nope. his first. I think it's weird. Oh, look at I'm me. My first I'm first birdie. I'm oh, I don't <laughs> keep any of my balls. Yeah, that would never happen at Quaker. Life is fleeting. Never. Everything is, it's an impermanence. We don't keep any of this stuff. You got to keep something. <laughs> an impermanence. <laughs> Get nihilist real quick here. Yeah, no, right. I, I Nihilist like... golfers are like, throw, like, throw that thing away right <laughs> yeah. now. 
Never use it again. I remember the first eagle I ever made, and it was the 18th hole at a place called Old Kinderhook at the Lake of the Ozark, or at uh, Table Rock Lake in, um, no, it is Lake of the Ozark. Sorry, Lake of the Ozarks in Missouri. Anyways. The um, first eagle was at Bethpage uh, Eisenhower Red Course, and my dad just dunked it right in. Come on. Yeah. That's great. Sick. Sick. Ryan uh, from Connecticut. It's about, uh, it's a little over a year out. I'm speculating on who will be eligible to be on the American team as the 12 players for the Ryder Cup at Bethpage. Is Bryson or DJ on the team? I think Bryson, yes. DJ, no. DJ's DJ, sneaky getting up there. He's 39, I think. He's about to be 40. He is. I guess like that question kind of led me down the path of like, if the if the event were, were next week, would Bryson be on the team? I think he would. He's got so much firepower. He's going to make so many birdies. I, I, yeah, he was great in the Masters. I would... Well, yeah. yeah, I would definitely have Bryson on the team, and I think they. I think the PJ of America is has been the most. I don't want to say pro live, but least anti live. They invited a bunch of live guys based solely on their play on live, so they clearly think it's legit. Right. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Roger. Hi, Holly. Um, How are you guys? What's up, Roger? Great. Just doing two. Just two. There's a bunch of shows going on. People waving mics. People just doing media. People waving mics. Feels like we're on a lake, kind of. Everybody waves at each other. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I agree with Dan. I watch. I I wish I could give him a shout. Out. I don't know his Instagram handle. Maybe because I was at Creators Day, I was getting a bunch of like in, like YouTube cre- um, Instagram golf creators were on my Explore page. And one guy had a really funny clip about uh, the tight lip, the tight lipped like head nod on golf courses. Right there, it was like a. He, I don't. I man. I wish I could find this, but uh, his Instagram handle is just at Roger underscore Steel. Is that what you're trying to? Nope. Shout out? Oh, it does no, that's the guy back there, right? Yeah, that's Roger Steele back there. No, yeah. I'm talking about someone else. Oh, um, but we like do we love said, Roger Steele. Got fucked up last night. It's fine. Hey, yeah, he's to get through he's to a great guy. That was a Jake Bass moment. He's a great guy. <laughs> we we drove down from the airport to Pinehurst with him. It was awesome. Him and his baby. It was awesome. Fantastic. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the the tight lip knob was very funny. Yeah, it was like a, it was like a. My name is Frankie Borelli, and I'm a victim of doing the tight lip tight lip it's knob. True, dude. And he's like, no matter what the situation is, you're just. It's always down. Yeah. Up is someone that you know. Up is like, let's talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Down yeah. is just, he's like, I don't want to have a conversation with you, but I definitely want to acknowledge that we're both on a golf course. We're both. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. That is funny. Yeah. Uh, Brian says, quick question. Is your partnership with Owens Mixtures for the transfusion ended? Hard to find in the stores these days. You guys uh, used to roll out transfusion merch all the time. The answer is yes. Yeah. I think it was like a two or three year deal. Something yeah. along those lines. We launched the transfusion, I think, during COVID. I think it was that sounds like right. During yeah. COVID, it was 2020. And I think it was about a three-year deal. And then at that point, Owens, whatever they had created, the supply, all that, they could sell off. So you might see it occasionally here and there, but it has ended. We're definitely trying to get into the drink game in terms of figuring out what we're going to do. I think yesterday was a pretty big day for us. Great day for yeah. that. Yeah. Great yeah. day for that. Maybe we'll see if people like that, um, that whiskey talk. Who knows? Maybe that goes somewhere. It might go somewhere. Yeah. yeah. I like you- whiskey. It's great. It's it's a it's as you get older and like now like I have a house and I have my own couch and my own TV yeah. and like nice glasses and you gotta have just, nice whiskey. It's good it's ice. Civilized drinking. And it's just like you sip on it and it definitely gets expensive, but it's like also fun to kind of spend money on last it. Night, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Were pretty good. civilized. Unless I got yeah, rowdy no, after I went home. We were all no. It was it was, it was a late night. Yeah. It was a late one. That's really what it was. It was late. Put in the late. wrong hotel in the Uber. Oh no! We got to the wrong one. I was, I was asleep by eleven. And Did you put there's? It is what it is. Did you hear that? Was that a little thunder? Yeah, there's a weather warning. Okay. Um. <laughs> all right. So. Okay. Let's get the fuck out of here. One of the all-time clips was when we had a thank you off with Phil Mickelson at the Liberty National. I yeah. remember that. Remember that? Thank you for what you do for the game. No, th- yeah. Thank you, Phil. Thank you for thanking You're us for thanking thank us you. for what it's we do for the game. Been hitting balls for hours. I, I miss Liberty National. I gotta. <clears throat> they gotta bring that place back. LPGA Tour. I know. There's this week. I think no, yeah. I saw Nelly Corda warming up on the range there. That yeah. place is so fun. It's just such a cool place to, to have a golf to tournament. Summer. It's awesome. President's Cup there. It was first. Um, the first time we had Trent and I had three guys on at the same time. It was Kevin Chapel, Kevin Kisner, and the Seagull. I think. Yeah, we were at Thirty Rock. Uh, yeah, we were. We they came saw, and did like media we tour. We went and saw mm-hmm. the SNL stage, and it was like wow. It was a very was surreal. A cool day. Yeah, it was a very I was surreal. Very nervous but um, but yeah, I think weather warning, and we've been talking for too long, and now it's just time for these guys to play major championship golf. Okay. So we're gonna be out on the course Thursday. We've got the uh, shout out to T-Mobile. They've got the um, Club Magenta. Club Magenta. Club Magenta, which we're going right now. We're gonna go out there. 
All right. We're so going go to get right back on the wagon. That bad boy's right by the 10th hole, um, right by the 10th green, I think it is, uh, out here at Valhalla. So if you're around this weekend, make sure you buzz by there. Check out the uh, Club Magenta. It's fun. They got um, they got a bunch of different like talent Q&As that's going to be going on. They got charging station. They got a cool 5G-powered putt preview challenge, I believe, they've got out there. There's all kinds of cool stuff going on with T-Mobile. They're the best. Uh, other than that, have a great week. Enjoy the PGA. We're going to put out a show, uh, I think, Monday morning as like a quick reaction show after the PGA Championship ends up, uh, f- finishes up. I'll be up at Gamble Sands in uh, Brewster, Washington. we got a Barstool Classic up there. So we're just going to keep rolling. Everybody have a great week. Hit it hard. Hit it hard. Hit it hard. Hit it hard.